Hello ladies and gentlemen, I am Pantas the Mighty Mix Bummer and this is day 3 of my Endless Space playthrough. Yesterday unfortunately I did not quite record as much footage as I would like to. This is because somebody, I'm not going to tell the names, insisted that I would go and watch a movie with that person and well unfortunately I did agree to that. So not only I wasted over 2 hours of my life, also the movie was very very bad. It was just kind of surprising because it had good reviews and stellar cast, I mean really some of those actors were amazing, and the only thing that kept me from, you know, scratching my eyeballs off of, of my skull was the actor play, because they really played well and that was the only thing, the only redeeming fact of the movie, but still it was very very bad. It just says a lot about the guy who was in charge of this whole affair. But anyway, we are not here to talk about any movies good or bad, we are here about to talk about a game that is Endless Space, which is an excellent game. Now, unfortunately, I do not quite remember what I was doing just yesterday. I guess that this fleet I have over here at System Zen might be an indicator that I would like to conquer this system in the real Wow, holy. Okay, in the relative future, <laughs> but here it looks like they have a lot of ships over here guarding this very system. Do I have a lot of ships? Yeah, yes. I have three Nephilims. Now, I think that I do know I want to do is I was, I have been thinking in the past about this situation when I can only fit three Nephilims in my fleet and I will, I'm at this kind of situation unable to fit anymore, but I am able to fit in one smaller ship. So I have been thinking to maybe retrofit Asmodana to fit a completely new purpose, because this uh, type of ship is especially good when you want to carry support uh, modules for ammo invasion power. Now ammo obviously does not concern me at all, but mostly because it's kind of useless. I mean really, ammo is garbage at this point. There's no reason to have it, it's simply much better to have these defense materials. Maybe you have a different opinion on your own, if, if so then go for it and voice it, but this is my opinion. And I believe an opinion of many other beta testers. But no, better testers, I cannot speak today, that's because I'm so excited. I have my juice back! Yes, the original juice that has been with me at the start of this playthrough now. It is the same company as from the beginning. It tastes amazing and it is cool, so it's all good and dandy. So anyway, let's throw a little bit of my excitement away because I want to be able to speak properly. So all those bonus I for Lysos ship class or the way we, a normal person would call it, the cruiser ship class, makes it an amazing support ship, which is exactly what I'm going to go for. So, first of all, let's delete all of those modules, and now let's install some modules of my own. So, first of all, I am going to install adaptive glue, because the, I want this ship to be a support ship for my entire fleet, so I am going to install some brainwave sensors just to give it some extra scouting view. Now this unfortunately I do not have any engine upgrades so installing this engine upgrade would not be reasonable at all because it wouldn't speed my fleet at all. I would have to have some better tech for that but then again if you remember correct... Uh, wait a minute I forgot to start my timer again. Ah, Give me a second. I knew I was missing something. Start! There we go. So anyway if you remember, uh, recently, at least I believe it was recently, uh, there was this random event that made everybody in the universe have better engines. So I do not really need any engine upgrades. What I do need is some invasion upgrades. Now this is the weakest invasion upgrade possible, but it's still something and I'm definitely going to use one. Actually no, because this is just more military power on a ship. Never mind, so how about this? This gives me more damage max and minimum on weapons but only on this ship okay never mind so apparently i did not quite have the technology i was hoping to have which would boost my entire fleet not just this single ship so yeah cancel we will deal with that in the future let's see what do i have queued up in my research i have some pretty interesting things queued up it looks like i am gonna go for okay this is what i will need to make this azomatan thing work so after i research this uh, technology which is called the gravitic energy which will allow me to do more damage in an entire future which is going to be awesome i will queue up i guess maybe oh that's more defense on a staff system i want to the offense not defense 
Oh, this is cool. More mili uh, invasion military power on a fleet. This is amazing. This will probably allow me to instantly cap pretty much any system of desire, which is kind of cool. Now, what is this? In more invasion military power on a ship, don't really care. Now, oh, this is kind of cool. I mean, if we, I was self I will definitely go for this one, but I'm not sure if this is the case in this very playthrough. Now, this is yet another upgrade for an entire fleet, and this is also an upgrade for an entire fleet. I'm not sure if I'll go for it, though. At least not now. For now, it seems like upgrading straight-up damage from my influence seems like a better and more important idea. Let's check the alliances. Yes, they still walk the way they are supposed to. Let's see if there is anything that requires my attention in my beautiful empire. It doesn't look like there is. I think I did take care of that in my last video. I still cannot increase the tax rate. This makes me very unhappy. As it would make my citizens unhappy to increase the tax rate. And I don't want them to be unhappy. I just want them moderately happy with their life. Or rather, I want them above moderately happy with their lives. Because then they will give me more science production and all of this stuff. That they will normally have to pay for, and this way those fools are now giving me all of this for free. <laughs> That's what the kind of evil man I am. And now let us engage. I wanted to engage a bigger fleet, pardon me. Not this kind of small. Oh well, let's just. It's the beginning of the Zudicast, might as well. War up with a little target practice. I do not believe this, this single ship will be of any issue to me at all. And it is something that could be implemented in the future, I have no doubt it will be. Because in the past, in the Alpha, as you might remember, we were unable to choose what kind of fleet we, we wanted to attack if there are multiple fleets in a single system. So if there would be, let's say, Horatio and Hishon in the same system, I wouldn't be able to choose which fleet, which race I want to attack. Now I am able to do so, but I am still unable to, do, to choose what kind of fleet from this particular race I want to attack, which is something that could be implemented in the future, I would be very happy for that, as obviously in this case, rather than attacking a single miniature type ship, I would like to use minor flames to destroy something bigger and maybe a little bit more ferocious as well. Fortunately, at least they cannot run away, because I am glad this is and nothing gets in and out of it as long as I am here. Obviously this will change if somebody destroys me, but I do not really think this will happen. Now, let me see if I do have... Do I have any other fleet of Nephilim at the ready? I believe I do. Yes, I do. This is the Beta Fleet Station and the Imperial System. And currently I think I wanted to stay there. I might change that in my mind though. No, never mind. I was considering hiring another hero just for the sake of controlling another fleet, but I'll do this later when I have a cooler looking hero. Let's just say, let's just put it this way. Now, I, let me end this turn and just stress how much I love you guys. Because this is this day free, I already started getting some feedback for the videos that I already managed to upload on YouTube. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Or as I would say in Korean, Kamaoyo. Uh, and what I will add after that would be Mani 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 Saranyo. Because I really love you all. And what did just happen over there? I have no idea, but you know what? I think this is because my uh, Sophon allies, no, my Horatio allies moved in. They probably had some kind of fleet that gave me bonus radar. So now I cannot directly see the enemy's fleet, but I know it's there. This is very good. Now, Sophons are only warm. This is bad. I will need to do something because I liked when it when they would like to do some sweet, sweet love with me, not just be warm with me. So I'll tend to this right away. Sophons. Let's see how about that. let's look about that. All right, military power ten. So I should not make too many nephews from now on. Okay, I could do this, but other than that, actually, it looks like there's not much I should do. I mean, I'm pretty sure in the near future they will be very, very loving me indeed. Still, I could go for some kind of deal. I don't care about pure scale accelerators nor about those two technologies. How about this? Living inhabitants and virtualized comms. I have no idea what this is, but it sounds amazing. In return, I could give you solar mining. No, you do not really want this. How about any battle technology? You don't want this either. Advanced simulations? No. Lepan manipulation? You kind of want this, but not that much. No and no. So how about lepton manipulation, which will give my allies some amazing laser technology. 
and from in advanced simulations as well so they will have even more powerful ships that sounds about right of course obviously they were accepted and now they should be even more happy with them with me because yeah they are very close and as you can see i cannot move my mouse because then this pop-up will disappear but as you can see now my bonus due to donations has increased to plus 17 which should carry us through this moment of let's say military tension now as you can see Hisho did send a small scouting fleet to my imperial system that's not gonna be a problem at all so far except my deal no wonder i just explained why this happened oh and somebody mentioned that i should really look at the stats of the enemy fleets because this will tell me what i should prepare for the future very, thank you very much for this tip and another tip that i'll actually showcase right away i do know if i were for example to or uh, get some living habitants uh, right now on the system. I wouldn't have to cancel the Nephilims if I would like to get them in front of it. I could just move this like that. See? That's pretty awesome indeed. But I actually do not want those living habitants. I want to have Nephilim first. After that, living habitants might be a possibility. Actually, what did it give me? <gasps> More population on methane, helium, asteroids, and hydrogen. Okay, never mind. It doesn't really benefit me at all in any of those systems but it will benefit me in Kane I'm pretty sure oh and there's some other upgrades in Kane that I did not quite go for it so that's definitely what I'll do right now and yet again thank you for real making me realize that you can just simply drag those things around makes my life so much easier I love you all a lot all right, there are some hydrogens. Where else do I have hydrogens? Caldium? I think there is no. There's the Slava Tristam. Nope. And Kurast? No. Oh, actually, there is one, but I still have a long way to go in this system. As I said in my previous video, I did not really care about my conquer systems because, well, they're garbage. I would kill everybody in those systems if it was at all possible. Actually, I wouldn't because I care about the money, but nothing more than that. Yes, I'm an evil being, and I'm completely cool with that. Now, this actually is not going to be any sort of bigger battle because the enemy only has the most basic ships imaginable i mean i do think they have a couple of what are they called destroyers whatever it doesn't really matter i'll probably destroy them in the first turn actually it looks like the hisho are going for counter sabotage skill a lot so i'll go for tactics this time see how this looks out maybe i'll even take some damage because tactics does decrease the efficiency of my defense module but yeah, as I expected, it would actually never mind. It would count defense, not offense. So I should have gone for target, target locked. Oh well, it's not gonna matter at all, not in this battle at least, because yeah, see those explosions? Those would be my Nephilims at the ready. And oh, I just love this sound. This. I love it. This is the reason why I'm a huge science fiction fan. I just like explosions. That's it. That's one of the. Well, I do have a couple of more explanations to that, but I believe this, this one is the most valid, because who doesn't really like explosions, let's face it. I mean, I understand that people like Sunny do not, but let's face it, spending a childhood during the Gulf Wars in... What's it called? Qatar? Qatar? No, she wasn't in Qatar, she was somewhere else. I don't remember. Could be kind of compromising to your love for explosions but that's an entirely different thing altogether i was f lucky enough never to be uh, experiencing any war in real life so i can enjoy wars in computer at the free will so let's go for more visibility and this game unlocked absolutely nothing whatsoever so i'm kind of disappointed in here but it should give me more visibility actually it doesn't look like it really did and if it did then <laughs> then let's just say that it did not work quite as much as I hoped for it to, but I guess I'll just go for it. Speaking of war and all this grim stuff, I do actually believe that computer games are what is currently keeping many of us from going on a rampage, because I'm pretty sure that if I were not a gamer, I would probably be a serial killer. I mean, let's face it, the amount of time I spent killing in video games is just allowing me to, you know, calm down and chill down and have a little bit of relax that I would otherwise, otherwise be unable to get without the means of murdering a bunch of people, which probably would not be really that fine, let's be honest about that. And yeah, I have been wondering if you noticed this, I can, I'm pretty sure I know what this is. Friend of an enemy, let me guess, the pilgrims lost to the pirates! <laughs> 
Well done, pirates. Well done. This is exactly what I was hoping for. <laughs> And this is by all means hilarious, because seeing how unempowered I fell to the pirates, how hard do you have to try to fall to the pirates? I mean, seriously. And Pigros are a really decent faction as well, as I stated in my pre in my first video of this playthrough. But it seems like the AI doesn't know how to use its traits, it only know how to not use its traits and how to focus on its models, which can be devastating if you do not know the theory as a, of a glass cannon type ship. But if you do like glass cannon type ships, then you definitely want to go for the pilgrims. Also, if you like money, this is definitely a faction for you because they love money and they can even trade with cravers. Yeah, that's crazy, but they can do that. It's kind of ridiculous. So, what I, can I do? Over on Kingsport, I apparently was constructing a Nephilim, which I totally completely forgot, but it doesn't really matter. So right now I just go for industry into science fiction convic conviction. Science fiction conviction sounds like an awesome name for an album. Actually, not really, but let's just go with that. You know what? I will send this Nephilim straight away to my fleet, so it will save me some time I would have to spend on retrofitting the other Nephilim in the fleet. And this way I'll have a bunch of Nephilim 2.0 instead of two Nephilim 2.0 and one Nephilim 1.0 If this is indeed a correct way to say it If it isn't, I don't really care, I'm not that bad of a man Ibony, that's a strange name for a uh, system Maybe Ebony would be better, but oh well Ibony apparently has finished some stuff and you know what I noticed that the further you go on this development, the more bonus I it gives you to the most hospitable plants like jungle, like Terran and the ocean. So maybe it is actually sometimes a decent idea to you know change your lava planet to let's say a jungle planet. But then again, if it even if it gives me bonus I on multiple levels, but still one less bonus in, let's say, industry production, simply because it's jungle and not lava, then I still wouldn't really consider it being worth it, unless I had a bunch of... Well, what I would like to... I don't know. If right now I would much rather like to terraform my ocean planets into lava planets, just so I'd have more industry. <laughs> yeah, I'm kind of evil. And this actually would not be the case in real life, because I hate the heat, I hate the lava, I hate everything there is to hate about the lava planets. But in this game industry is just kinda way to go, to be honest, so yeah. But as I said, it might be a possibility that if your technology is high enough, then it doesn't really matter if you have lava plant or an ocean plant for industry faction and uh, factor and re re uh, what do you call it? Terraforming the planet will give you a lot of other bonus sign, which would be kinda decent. Now, a lot of stuff apparently happened, I'm not sure exactly what did, but it doesn't really matter. I did get my quantum processing upgrade, which is amazing! Wait, what? Though the theory of quantum computing is ancient, the mechanical difficulties of breaking a physical machine with the appropriate number of uh, qubits, roughly 10... Yeah, that's kind of a lot. <laughs> I mean, it was a practical impossibility. <laughs> now that civilization has reached the point, my technology is capable of you for you, wow, I am... Absolutely the most amazing race in the galaxy. I mean, it's incredibly, it's unimaginable, and I love this about this kind of games that they just do this, you know, that they just increase the boundaries of your imagination and show you what we, maybe not as humanity but as intelligent beings, are capable of in the future. I think this is some just deep talk right there, or rather, some just crazy crap talk that I'm capable of. But it doesn't really matter. Now, minus ship cost on the star system, this is definitely something I would go for. So for organizing cities, this is always good. And I don't know why I cancelled it when I could have just moved it, but it doesn't really matter all that much. Now, can I merge those two together? No, I cannot. So I'll move my Nephilim to the Kane system and merge it with the Wicks that are stationed in it already. Which is actually, they actually not that weak, there's another Nephilim and Diablo in there, so I guess I really do have a decent fleet right now. Vortex system has finished doing something, so let me just queue up some more things to do for it. Because I really do not care about no Vortex or anything. And after this is ready, yeah, let's go for that one. Any other systems that require my attention? Easel. Easy. Maybe Diesel, that would sound better. 
So, apparently I could go for this one. I'm not sure why I haven't done so already, but apparently I can do it right now, so that's definitely what I'm going to go for. And nothing more, because this system is largely useless. And Ibani, yet again, I use this system that I do not really have a lot of stuff to do with. Fortunately, it does have some moons, it does have some other things over here, so I can just happily queue up a gazillion stuff and never ever bother with this system again, which is exactly the thing I like to happen. And... Apparently the fact that my hero has a bonus, how much is it? Give me a second. Bonus fall to radar range does not matter at all. It doesn't look like he's got, yeah, apparently this is the plus four bonus to radar range. This is kind of ridiculous, I have to admit. Why am I not guarding the system? I was guarding it before. Maybe, oh yes, you know what? I wasn't guarding it for a second when I was changing the nothingness around, so that's the reason. Alright, yet another pathetic fleet. So while my fleets are preparing to battle out on some next song, terribly sorry for that. I guess my voice sounds a little bit ridiculous right now, but what else can I do? I do need to see what I'm doing. And well, let's just put it this way. Break on blind is not the kind of thing you want to do. There's one more light source I want to turn on and I hope I will have time to commit an action and I did just find enough time. It would be kind of hilarious if I didn't do anything this turn because I was stunning my lights. Then again, I doubt anything would happen because, let's face it, I have Nephilims. Nephilims. They are very, very good. Now, this time, after this battle so finishes, I'm going to just spend a moment looking at the stats of the enemy fleet. The reason uh, for this being I do want to know what the Hishos are going for. I do not think I will retrofit my ships just for the Hishu because they will soon be dead anyway, but I will definitely do this kind of tricks for the Cravers once we get at war with them, and we will end up in a war with them, don't worry about that. Okay, I will go for Engine Tuner just because I pray this will give me some sort of useful ability. Tinker, oh wow, okay, that's definitely what I was looking for, more defense and more offense, that is always very good. I should have gone for this a long time ago, but oh well, it doesn't really matter now, I cannot ruin time. Or, actually, in the game sense of time, I could by loading it out to save, but who on earth would do that, I mean, seriously. So, anything... Oh yeah, I forgot to look at the stat screen for the fleets to see what he show are going for technologically. Oh well, I'll do this next time, I still have a couple of ships to tear through. So, that's when I will take care of that, I guess. Now, as I can see, my control zones are increasing slowly but steadily. I'm half tempted to populate those towards myself and just give them the sulfons because for some, for some reason they seem unable to do anything with those systems, which is very, very surprising indeed. I mean, why? You have the expansion ships, why don't you expand? I don't get it, I don't. Now, Sahiro and Sister Team Sport has reached a new peak of awesomeness, which is decent. I'll give him Veteran? Yeah, I think Veteran is a decent way to go. And Emergency Shelter. You know what? I believe this action might be a little bit overpowered. I don't know what it's cost. I never used it. I never even had a hero commanding fleet that, that had this ability. But just imagine that. Using that ability three times in a row means that you cannot lose a single ship during a battle. Just use it over and over and over again and you basically have an indestructible ship. I do not know if this is uh, the way it works, but if it is, then it is kinda ridiculous. Let's just put this this way. And if you have a lot of dust, like a lot of players tend to at the late game, then yeah, you can just imagine the chaos that would go for it. Besides, there is one more thing that I would like to focus on, sorry for dwelling for a little bit more, but let's just look at this. Uh, the dust actions, the actions that require dust cost, right? Now, they're fairly cheap at this moment. For example, dust will cost only 20, it's not a strong action anyway, but I don't think there's any action that costs more than 70 dust per action. But like, in the late game, we like, uh, how many? O almost a thousand dust per turn. I, I mean, I do have a big empire, but let's say that an average player in the late game would gain at least like 250s. So I guess he could spam those test abilities all the, as much as he would like to. Now, this might be the way that the developers were going for, and obviously we do want to see as many pure pure things as possible, but then again, some of those battle actions are very powerful. So it might be just uh, in a good 
tone to, to make them a little bit more expensive, just a little bit, maybe add like one one percent of your total income to the cost of an ability that would be quite a lot in the late game for those rich players while it wouldn't affect those poor players too much i think this would be a decent idea that's just my opinion though you can disagree or share with your own opinion i'm always up for that because your own opinions as i recently noticed tend to be kind of awesome indeed now, anything else I want to do in here, except for wiping out the enemy fleet? Yeah, I guess this is just about it. I want to wipe out the enemy fleet, that sounds about right. And while we are patching, yes, this is our officially the very first moment in this video when I'm drinking my juice. Yeah, there we go, take that. Mm. Oh man, it's so tasty, so tasty, one more sip. Oh, one more. Oh. Mm. No pressure. It's not like I wasn't going to make it or anything. Yeah, I can. I guess there's some action in the background. It's not. Actually, my Nephilim took some damage. I'll, a very small portion of damage, but nevertheless, they did. So I definitely will want to make sure and check what exactly did deal damage to me. Because that's kind of suspicious, kind of surprising. What on earth was able to tear, well, not tear through my ship's armor, but what was able to scratch it? Something scratched my ship. It might have been a small scratchy, scratchy thingy, but still, it. I can't set it again! No! <laughs> then again, actually, now I can just click on this. Can I? Nope, I cannot. That's unfortunate. Now, what I want to do is... Let me think, did I already say what victory I, the condition I'm going for? I could go, well, not the economic one, because I'm still pretty far behind. Scientific one, well, it's kind of boring. It's boring, I've gone for it before, it's kind of satisfying. But I don't think I'll go for it. Maybe expansion victory, but it's also relatively... Meh, I'm not sure. I'm really curious how the dance diplomatic victory work. I've never seen it uh, so far, so I kind of will try to achieve it. I guess I'll simply have to wipe out every race except for my allies. Which would be the same as supremacy victory, so no, I'm not sure how does diplomatic victory work. I really don't, I'm not. Anyways, let's just uh, move this fleet around a little bit. Do I want to move this fleet or the other? You know what? Okay, let's just do this. My second main fleet will go in from Imperial System to Zain or whatever, and my fleet from Kingsport will patrol over the Imperials. The reason I am moving those fleets around is pretty straightforward. I do want to continue moving on onto the enemy territory with my main fleet, but at the same time, I do not want this fleet to be able to roam freely around my Empire. So I will use my newly arrived Nephilims to take care of the enemy warriors. Warrior? Warrior? That's the lowest ship class possible. By the way, I just realized, remind me to talk a little bit about cruiser in in a moment as soon as we finish this battle because I just realized its shape is only familiar or rather it's not only familiar but it does look like something else that is not necessarily a ship and this com this thing that this image that came to my mind looks kinda epic. Let's just put it this way. So, anyway, as you can see, I am boring, I went for Tackle Locked yet again, because... I mean, why not? It doesn't give me any difference in my side, and does increase the power of my laser wheels, which are pretty much the main weapon for my ships at the moment. Now, interestingly enough, I have never seen my ships firing, uh, firing a single kinetic shot. That's strange, because I know that they do have some kinetic weapons, but they haven't fired a single one of them yet, at least it has not been a visible effect. I don't know if this is a beta thing or if this is actually intended. I do hope this is a beta thing because the more lasers and kinetics we see, the more awesome the game is. Now, okay, so this fleet is right now free to go onto the new... I forgot to look at the screen again! I'm so bad at this game, it's ridiculous. I mean, seriously, I was supposed to see what actually managed to damage my NFMs last time and I forgot to do this yet again. This is seriously pathetic. You know what, however, I am going to go to Imperial System 
and go ahead and get my propagator out. Simply because I will propagate on a Miyaki Ishii system and straight away, straight away give it to soft ones. That's because I want them to have this expansion and I want them to have border conflicts with Cravers. This will make sure this this way I'll ensure that the war will be upon us soon and that yet again I'll have a common enemy with my allies, which is exactly the way to go. Now, I, in theory, I could go ahead and capture the ZU system. There's not much stopping me from doing that. Actually, there is nothing stopping me from doing that. It's just that I'm lazy? Question mark? I surely should do that. But then again, I'm curious if this expansion ship for of us will ever find itself many enough to actually repopulate a planet. Maybe it won't, maybe it will. Okay, so I'll sit again as scared of my military. Where there should not be, because I actually like Sophons, so there's no way I'm going to hide them in any way, shape, or form. Crest, what do you have for me? I'm going to colonize this hydrogen giant, and right away I can go for some upgrades on the hydrogen, because, well, hey, why not? And that seems like a decent idea, and also Imperius has my expansion ship out there ready. I'm going to send it right away at the Marvelous ship system, and I hope it will make it in a single turn. I think it will. It does have t tuned engines, yes, indeed, and managed to do this. Now, Molten Core, what does that do? More science. That's definitely something that my allies would love. But then again, it's a gas, me large gas methane. And it would be much easier for my allies to repopulate a small ocean. What is this? More food per habitant on the planet. This is definitely something good. How about this? Come on, Tyler. Dude, where's my silica? What? Is that a reference to something that I'm just not aware of? Whatever, it doesn't matter. Let's just expand over here. And straight away. So fast. I have a gift for you. What's it called? Mrigashi. Mrigashi. I have Mrigashi for you! No, 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 Mrigashi for you! No, no. Now, maybe they can trade me something interesting for that. Pure scale? No. Flawless? No. Depeated? No. Mass scale? Second generation warp and arid transformation? Maybe I'll go for that. Actually, yes, I will go for... Apparently, no, I will not, because they think this is an amazing technology that they don't want to give me for nothing. Edward, advanced countermeasures? No? Okay, I'll just give you this plant for free. Why not? Now, they should be very close uh, in the next turn, but they also should hopefully stop wasting their time trying to capture a planet that they could simply capture. But oh well, it happens. So, let me finally look at the uh, summary screen at the end of this bottle. Otherwise, it would be kind of embarrassing for me. Not to do so for like, I don't know, fifth time in a row or something? Oh yeah, I was supposed to talk about the cruiser class ship. And I forgot. That's just my amnesia in action. There we go. Actually, that's pretty much... I'm pretty sure that doesn't qualify as part of my amnesia. It's probably just stupidity. Or maybe a little bit of both combined. Actually, this works. Interceptor 20 to 32. That's a strange fleet name. I mean, really strange, and I think that this is going to be a bad example for... Actually, no, those two ships did manage to hurt my nephilims a little bit, as I can see, it did... The health bar moved a little bit, I think, I'm not sure. Yes, it did, because right now it moved backwards. So, yeah, I definitely am going to look at the summary screen to see what damaged me. But it did look like those are pure kinetics, so I should invest in some... A bit in a little bit more kinetics damage, so okay, I don't care about that. And not kick at the smith. So yeah, they only have kinetic, and apparently they have nothing in deflection and shield. Are they stupid or something? <laughs> what? It doesn't even qualify as a glass cannon all that much because uh, oh, kinetics and glass cannon? No, no, glass cannon is most effective with either missile or beams. That's at least my opinion, because Musas on the first turn they deal a lot of damage and Beams, they always do a lot of damage and they are also very accurate and far faster than Missiles. And the problem with Missiles and the Glass Cannon technique is that you might lose your ship before it even manages to, uh, to fire any, which I with no doubt you've seen in some of my previous videos. So anyway, 
my fleet operating over the Mars is ready to fight an extraordinary weakling like fleet. I have really no idea what Fisher are thinking right now. Can't you just roll over and die? I mean, I don't want to, uh, to cease fire off her because I forgot to attack on this ship again. No! <laughs> oh well, maybe now I remember. Anyway, I don't want the ceasefire offer because this is just cheap. I want them, I want Hishu to die and suffer for the insubordination they did. Aka attacking me when they thought uh, they would win. But I do not really want to waste time conquering all their patriot wards and destroying their non-existent fleet. So I would much rather focus on Kravitz right now. Thing is, Fighting on two fronts at once could be challenging even for my powerful fleet, which I believe at this stage should be the most powerful fleet in the galaxy, especially because of my stupid mistake I am playing on normal instead of hard as I wanted to. But as you can see, yeah, yet again I took some more damage. And if this uh, damage, and if this trend does continue, I might find myself in a little bit of problem. Then again, I could just go for Dust Barrier, which will negate the enemy kinetics in 100%, at least that, that's what I believe it would do with the amount of HP that Nephilims have at their disposal. Now, while those Nephilims are capturing the Mala system, I want the other Nephilims to capture the Beatrix system, because this will simply save me some time. There we go, I can start capturing, and good news, there's no fleet guarding Beatrix, so... And there will be none, because I am guarding Mars, which is the only passage rate of Beatrix, so... I guess there will be no problem for those Nephilims to capture Beatrix now, because of course there is a technology that does allow you to travel without the use of warp links or wormholes, so in theory he should could travel straight from Janino, uh, Janimo system to Beatrix, but hey, it would take a lot of time unless you have some sick engine upgrades, and it is possible. And B, I forgot what I want to talk about again, and there we go, my iPhone just informed me that I should because I'm close to it, we still have a couple of minutes though. I did notice that my compression uh, software does, I think it allows any kind of footage that is below 40 minutes, not 30. So I think I can go for that. Now let's just confirm that the enemy is in indeed focusing on the kinetics only. Yes, that's exactly what is happening. But this time I will not forget. Talking about Asmodan, do you know what it reminds me of in the terms of looks? It, rem it looks like a giant gun, maybe a shotgun or s combat rifle in some kind of science fiction, science fiction FPS shooter, maybe planet out or something. It's just imagine holding it in your hand, pressing a little button and blowing everything up that is right in front of you. This ship, it exactly looks like it was meant for utter destruction. I mean, look at this. It's just a ginormous flying weapon. At least that's what... It looks like to me. So, pros to that, pros to that, definitely. Alright, I am going to end this turn. If any enemy fleets show up, pop up, I am going to have a battle. But if not, then this will be the end for video number what? Six, seven? I don't even know anymore. And then I'll move straight on into the next one because I is definitely am still capable of going forwards. So, yeah, that's pretty much what I'll do. And because of that, I will not have my standard long outro. I will simply have a very short outro and short intro next time. Oh, and as you can see, Sophon Square indeed using the ability to move between the stars without the proper connection. And as you can see, wow, Hisho managed by using a very small fleet to capture Ursa back from Horatia. Horatia, shame on you, but I think Horatia should be able to recapture it with relative ease. Now, my hero has advanced yet again, obviously going for the Tinkerer, and wow, why have I not gone for Edge Tuner a long time ago? There's so many amazing things for me to go for. More defense, more offense, all of this is amazing. And I'm already on level 17, I only have 20 levels to choose from, so shame on me. But now I know, for the future, I will never make the same mistake again. Now, let's end this video with a battle, even if it's a small battle and move on to the next one. As you can see, today apparently there is a small bug that is causing this wheel not to rotate. By the way, I absolutely adore the guys in the development team, because I think today, or maybe it was yesterday, there was yet another hotfix patch. And this is a beta. They care so much about us, even though this is just a beta, they don't have to care about us at all. Obviously, they want us to test the game and so on and so forth, but still, 
A normal developer wouldn't even care. They would simply cash in on the money that was spent buying the game. These people actually, I feel like they are a thankful for us buying the game. B, interested in our opinions of the game. C, happy to see that we enjoy the game. Three qualities that I love about game developers, and I believe this is like the second company in the world, or maybe a third company in the world that I know of that actually really you can see that they care about the customer. The other being City Project Red and Sony Online Entertainment. I mean, I have not played any games of Sony Online Entertainment yet, but I've seen Planet Set 2 and it looked kind of awesome. So anyway, so far, the company behind this, Aptitude, Altitude, I'm sorry, I forgot your name, <laughs> but you are an amazing company nevertheless. So, it was Panthers of the Mighty Mix Palmer. If you enjoyed my video cast, then please, Subscribe to my channel and like my video. Most of all, leave a comment because I appreciate those the most, even more than likes and subscriptions. Thank you for watching and I'll see you online.